This episode explores how three Northern European cities that are recognized by the international community as the greenest cities on Earth are adapting to climate change. Our purpose is to show how the creative and adaptive genius of humanity can be used to create a better, cleaner environment for our children and the creatures of planet Earth while adapting to climate change. No matter what we do to slow climate change, climate change will occur. Surviving Earth also explores how our ancestors adapted to climate change, showing how human ingenuity is greatest during times when we are challenged. We have the tools and the knowledge to make the world a better place while preparing for the coming changes to our climate. Today, six billion people populate the Earth, and once again, we are faced with adapting to changes in our environment as a result of the changing climate. The dramatic changes we face today have led governments, scientists, and industry to attempt to find ways to stop climate change. If sea level rise achieves levels observed during the last interglacial, thousands of miles of shoreline will be flooded and millions of people who live less than a few meters above sea level will need to move to higher ground. In addition to the threat of rising seas, other areas of the planet will experience extreme droughts and deserts will expand beyond their current borders. Some areas where crops are now grown will become wetter and require new types of crops to be planted and harvested in new ways. Other areas will become more arid and more irrigation will be needed to support the farmlands, industry and populations living there. Other areas of the world will experience longer and more intensive storms. Rivers will flood, mudslides and rock slides will destroy homes, farmland and city centers in low-lying areas. We have adapted to these types of conditions in the past and will continue to do so into the future. But as these changes occur more rapidly and on a broader scale, smart planning will be required to optimize use of humanity's limited financial resources. Rather than simply building or rebuilding in areas that lie in the path of future floodwaters, mudslides and hurricanes, city planners should work with climate scientists and others trained to identify how climate change will affect the landscape of different regions over the next 50 to 100 years. By working with scientists, planners can design cities and industrial areas so they are prepared for climate changes that will occur in their region. Smart planning can reduce the impact of climate change and other natural disasters and eliminate the emotional and financial devastation associated with losing homes, businesses and infrastructure to the power of nature. Today, we visit three communities in Europe who are actively engaged in preparing for climate change. For the past 40 years, the leaders of Malmo and Vekwa, Sweden, have been preparing their communities for the impacts of climate change and working hard to become better stewards of the environment by reducing the pollution produced by their citizens and their cities. Through these actions, Malmo and Vekwa have made significant changes in the health and well-being of their communities and their people. They have successfully created jobs and improved the economies of their cities. They did not run from change. They embraced it and found ways to make the lives of their citizens better while improving their environment and creating a beautiful landscape that attracts tourists from around the globe. In Malmö, Sweden, city planners have designed the beautiful and sustainable housing complex of Western Harbor at a higher elevation than the previous industrial complex that existed at this location along the rugged Atlantic coastline. They engineered ingenious water control systems and check dams to direct up to six feet of coastal floodwaters away from the multi-million dollar development. The development is pedestrian and bicycle friendly 
has ponds and wetlands designed to capture water and increase the biodiversity and natural beauty of the landscape. Its pedestrian bike pathways are linked to coastal parks that stretch for miles along the shoreline, as well as to the city center. If you live here, you don't need a car. The climate is temperate enough that cyclists ride to work year-round. The current generation of city planners and civil and transportation engineers have paved the way for future generations of innovative thinkers in Malmo, Sweden. The community already derives much of its energy from wind power and has plans to develop even more of the impressive wind turbines that line the shore. They've initiated development of sustainable communities within the greater urban area. Communities with green roofs and aggressive recycling programs. By 2020, the city of Malmo will be climate neutral and by 2030, the whole municipality will run on 100% renewable energy. Transportation engineers are working hard to install more public transportation throughout the city, including linking the urban center to suburban and rural areas around Malmo. To minimize waste, new developments are striving to adapt historic buildings and structures to make them even more eco-friendly rather than bulldozing them and building new structures in their footprints. Like Malmo, Vekwa Sweden is on the forefront of preparing for climate change and its leaders are working hard to make their community energy efficient. Our politicians have been quite conscious about the environment for uh, quite a time now. Whoever rules in the city, who, uh, what party that rules, we have the same decision. All the decisions are taken in consensus about environmental things. Other cities, they have one decision and then they change the politicians and then they take two steps backwards. Uh, in Växjö we have been walking forwards uh, for over four years. They saw an enormous threat with global warming and they wanted to take their responsibility. At the same time as they saw opportunities, we have biomass here, we have companies that have developed around the industry, we have 500 new jobs. They were both thinking about the economic development of the city and their responsibility towards the world. We have many different projects here to, to mitigate uh, the CO2 emissions. It's very important that all new houses that are built are energy efficient. And we have a new area now where we're only going to build passive houses. They will not have a heating system. Our latest project is Putvakten, and that's a house built in solid wood and in passive house technology. And passive house technology means that there is no regular heating system. There is a wire connected to the grid for electricity, and the tap water comes from the power plant fired by renewable energy. But for the houses, the only energy uh, added is the energy to the refrigerator, the TV, the people that are working, living in the houses. Passive house in wood are the best way, the most climate smart way to build houses. And when you build the houses, the use of carbon dioxide or the emissions are uh, for the 64 apartments more than 1,000 tonne less carbon dioxide using wood instead of concrete. The next generation there will be positive houses. They produce more energy than they use. We have a, an environmental program here at the university. I mean the normal reductions of uh, energy, reduction of uh, CO2 in terms of students coming by bikes rather than by cars or so. A good infrastructure for the public transport system here. It was um, part of uh, our program here in Växjö to, to uh, focus on wooden construction as a, as a matter of fact. And this building is one example of that. 10,000 square meters is uh, the biggest wooden building in North Europe and uh, in the uh, building department we have five professors 
who are actually focusing on wood technology. Acoustics, uh, stability, fire resistance, everything that comes with wood. The major role of a university is not only research and communication, but it's also to educate the future engineers into thinking in renewable systems, into thinking in sustainability, into thinking distributed systems. So we're currently <laughs> the the greenest city in Europe in terms of the CO2 emissions per capita. The biggest uh, thing to reduce a carbon dioxide is the power plant. We have a power plant here that was fired by oil, heavy oil, like they were in the 70s, 1670s, and we had transferred, so we today use more than 97% renewable biomass. We produce heat and power to the city of Växjö. My main purpose is water chemistry, and I produce pure water for the steam boilers. In them, we produce steam for electricity and district heating. We heat up the water by burning biofuels. Those biofuels are rest products from other wood industries in this area. We have both sawmills and paper and pulp mills and they use the best fuel. Biomass is the residues from forest operations. It could be branches, tops, it could also be uh, residues from sawmilling activities uh, or even waste wood. Our main product is district heating that provides the citizens with hot top water and heating of their apartments and houses. And the second product is electricity. The hot water is transported in pipelines below the ground leading to all parts of the city. We produce approximately 90% of the heat demand in Växjö and by concentrating the combustion to one big unit you increase the efficiency of the total system. You can say that the city is more or less heated up emission free. We have had district heating since 1970. Sometimes people are worried about green technology, that it will take away their jobs, but we have seen the opposite. The use of locally produced renewable fuels adds to the local and regional economic activity and it also adds to the combating of global warming. We live in a country where sustainable forestry is promoted, of course, and we have had it for more than 100 years. Uh, we st always stay within the, the limits of growth. In, in fact, we are using it. approximately 80% of the growth is uh, harvested. So what's needed to be done now, the next big step, is the transportation sector, which we have to solve together with the US, the European Union and the big countries in Asia. I think what makes Växjö so successful is the leadership of the knowledge. And it doesn't matter if it's left or right, the politicians always work the same direction. The thing for us is to continue working on these issues and continue to be the leading and number one city in Europe, the greenest one. That's our goal.